Hey, hey, hey. Happy Tuesday. Come on in. Pull up a chair. Gaming Gang Dispatch is in the air. gang and welcome once again to the duct tape studios i'm jeff mcalear your host here at the gaming gang dispatch brought to you by incredibly enough the gaming gang.com of which i happen to be the founder and editor-in-chief so welcome aboard tonight is tuesday august 8th 2023 this is live stream number 948 if you're not overly familiar with the show let me point out super super casual around here just hanging out talking about the latest in tabletop gaming news and then normally we'll take a first look at a game every once in a while i'll actually do a live review here on the show but for the most part, most part. <laughs> Didn't that, isn't that what it sounded like came out? I know it wasn't bad, but like, no, for the most part. We do first looks here on the show. As I mentioned, uh, not overly serious around here. Keep that in mind. Anyway, tonight, I am actually going to be diving on in and taking a first look at Heroes of Barcadia, which is from the fine folks over at Roll a Crit. I will talk about them a little bit in the future because we got to meet up at Gen Con and they were really nice folks. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later in the show. So we're going to dive on in. We're going to take a look at this retail edition. And of course, this game is for ages 21 and up. You don't need to drink alcoholic beverages with it, though. You could easily just drink soda or juice or water. And we're also going to take a peek at the party pack. Woohoo! It's just a party right here in this pack. So we'll be taking a look at that in just a little bit as well. So if you are tuning in because you want to check out the first look at Heroes of Arcadia, do want to mention we tackled the tabletop gaming news first around here. So it is going to be a bit. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Gen Con and, and some goings on there as well as the news. So I'm guessing it's probably going to be about 40 minutes before we jump on into that first look at Heroes of Arcadia. So if you're watching live, Kick back, relax, put your feet up, enjoy yourself. I know it's early in the week, but I'm sure you've worked hard already. We'll get to it. Now, if you happen to be really impatient and you, you know, tuned in after the show is over, you can actually jump ahead. There are timestamps. They're located in the show notes. And depending on the device you might be watching this on, it could be right there in the timeline of the video that you can Jump right ahead, skip past the news, and get right on into that if you would like. Of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in tabletop gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more that you will not find here on the YouTube channel. You know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Also, this is a live show, so that means there is chat available. Now, that chat's not on screen. It's one of the ways that I keep some of the more unusual commenters at bay. But if you are a subscriber to the channel and you have been for at least 48 hours, I might tweak that a little bit. I'm trying to tweak it, maybe bring it down to 24. But if you are a subscriber and have been for a couple of days or more, 
you can take part in chat. So if you want to say howdy, maybe you've got a question, a comment, by all means, chime in. I will do my best to respond. First out the gate tonight was the Motor City Madman himself. Yes, one of our chat moderators, the Madman, is with us, as is Stray Kismet and Kathy Evans and John Mascola, who I had an opportunity to meet at Gen Con, is hanging out with us as well. So welcome aboard, everybody. Let's jump right on into the news because I have got an action-packed, well, maybe not action-packed, but at least a packed show ahead tonight. I do want to mention that uh, I'm playing around with the audio a little bit. So this is not all too processed at the moment. So hopefully it sounds okay. I seem to have an issue with my preamp. I think my preamp went out while I was at Gen Con because unfortunately the first look video that I shared for Big B Presents Glory of the Giants for D&D, &D, sound is like way off on that. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not great. And I actually had a couple of comments about it. So hopefully, let me know if the audio sounds okay. It should be in sync. I played around with it this afternoon, so. Knock on wood. So my first news piece, Harnwood. Harnwood. I need a, I need a sip here. It's, I swear, I'm going to be rusty tonight. I know it. I can tell you already. Too much time away from doing the live streams. I come out rusty. Never fails. Harn World Kingdom of Azadmir is up for Kickstarter funding for my friends over at Columbia Games. And now I've got the dope. Edamir is the fifth of nine different fantasy kingdoms printed in a beautiful hardcover format. Each kingdom is filled with political and player maps, detailed heraldry and genealogies, statistics on military resources, and prominent noble families. This hardback also includes the cities of Azidmir, Zerhan, and Habe. The kingdoms of Harn are widely recognized as some of the best writing and maps in fantasy role-playing game history. This Kickstarter is also your opportunity to dive into Harn World, the most detailed fantasy role-playing game ever created. This RPG world setting supports a wide breadth of character and campaign styles, from high fantasy to dark and realistic terror. Everything is blended into a believable world that gives Game Masters years of campaign material. Game Masters can use Harn World with just about any game system, including Dungeons & Dragons, Pathfinder, Fate, Savage Worlds, and many others. A vibrant community of gamers and players who are passionate about Harn thrives online. Harn World is a medieval world, loosely equivalent to 12th century Norman England, but with significant elements of fantasy added. The result is a world that keeps players grounded in reality. GMs can weave magical and fantastic campaigns within a natural, plausible setting. Players respond to this, and it affects their attitudes and decisions. Encounters become thought-provoking and carry emotional weight. Combat has consequences and is taken seriously. There's over 4,500 pages and 3 million words published to support the Harn World setting. New supplements and maps are published every few months. Welcome to Harn, where the fantasy is real. Now, there is a short Kickstarter video. I'm going to share it right now. I'm going to kind of cover the same exact things I was just saying there, but you'll get to see even more artwork. So let's take a peek. Columbia Games presents the latest in the esteemed series of hardbacks for the role-playing setting of Harnworld, the Dwarven Kingdom of Azadmir. Embark in an unforgettable adventure to this legendary realm nestled among the majestic peaks of the Sorkin Mountains. 
discover the ancient city of Azadmir and nearby Zerhun and Habe. The immersive sourcebook has been meticulously crafted on the forge of master authors and illustrators. The rich details of Kozdul society, history, and lore will let your imagination soar. Join the ranks of those who have discovered the wonders of the Dwarven Kingdom's rich history and culture. Whether you're a seasoned game master or a passionate player, the Kingdom of Azadmir offers a wealth of possibilities to enrich your campaign using any game system. Starting from a bird's eye view, you can drill down layer by layer to city streets, specific buildings, interior plans, and resident biographies, providing endless opportunities for adventure and intrigue. The Harm World setting supports a wide breadth of character and campaign styles, from high fantasy to dark and realistic. Everything is knitted together into a believable environment that gives GMs years of material to play with. The Harn World setting has been enjoyed by thousands of role players worldwide. There are over a million words in print and 4,500 pages of material in a never expanding environment like none other. You will also find a vibrant online community of game masters and players who are passionate about Harn. Go forth now and command your kingdom on Harn World, where the fantasy is real. This Kickstarter project is fully funded, and you can reserve a copy of the Harn World Kingdom of Azadmir hardcover with the PDF for a $49 pledge through September 27th. Expected delivery is pretty quick. It's this December. And if you want to learn more about this and a little bit more about Harn, be sure to check out my interview with Grant Dalgleish from Gen Con just went up. Give it a peek. It's always fun to talk with Grant, and he discusses this Kickstarter in a, a bit of depth and a bit about Harn World as well. So I do want to point out, with this Kickstarter, you can actually pledge a dollar. And unlike many Kickstarters out there where it's like, hey, you're just saying, I like this for a buck. For a dollar with this Kickstarter, you'll get a whole bunch of material for you to take a peek at to see if Harn and Harn World is up your alley. And if you want to support this Kickstarter. should also mention that the new Harn World hardcover is going to get sent to me. So I'll be able to share a first look of that in just a bit. So let's see. So Kevin R. Smith is with us. Wish I would have had a chance to uh, say hello to Kevin at Gen Con. Unfortunately, we never ran across each other. And uh, let's see. Flaming Huron, another of our chat moderators, is with us. And also got to say that I would take a guess that maybe our third chat moderator might be lurking around. So, yeah, so John's pointing out, yes, he was there. He got to meet me and my brother, or I guess I should say my brother and I, but people get mad when I use that phrasing. I don't know. I don't know what, what that is because people are like, no, no, it should be Greg and me. No, it's Greg and I, but I don't know. So Kevin said, yeah, they were too busy trying to figure out downtown Indy and run their events to reach out. Hey, I completely get it. We'll talk a little about Gen Con in a bit when we wrap up the news. I plan on kind of discussing Gen Con all through the three shows this week. So I'm not planning on talking about everything about it in like one night. So uh, I had a, a lot of cool things happen. I had something that just pissed me off. I'll make reference to it, but we'll, uh, we'll get to that in just a bit. So once again, check out this Harn World Kickstarter. There's also an opportunity for you to get your hands on the core book for Harn World. And yes, Sarah D says, lurking as charged. Good to see you, Sarah. Hopefully you are on the mend. Nice. 
So Kevin says they ran into YouTube gaming celebrity, celebrity, I should say, instruct a boy, not familiar, while buying the Symborum hardcover at the Free League booth. Nice. Very cool. Very, very nice. On to the next news piece. Paizo Inc. has revealed that there is a new edition of the Starfighter role-playing game, which is on the, well, I guess we'll say far horizon. Here's the announcement. We're ecstatic to officially announce that Starfinder 2nd Edition is happening. Back in 2017, we released Starfinder, a new game system and setting, to stand alongside Paizo's tried-and-true Pathfinder brand. Today, we're revealing the next evolution in Starfinder as we announce its second edition and lay out our plans for the future. This new edition of Starfinder is being designed to be fully compatible with the upcoming release of the Pathfinder Remastered rulebooks and all future Pathfinder second edition products. This means that all your Pathfinder content going forward will be compatible with the new edition of Starfinder that all Starfinder 2nd Edition content will work in Pathfinder. With your Game Master's permission, of course. Paizo will be releasing a full play test in summer 2024, but wanted to announce the new edition early because it's their intent to make Starfinder's play test the most open play test Paizo has released to date. Now that's all started already with the release of the first Starfinder field test. These documents are a little different than the playtest files that have been released in the past. Each field test is a snippet of ongoing design work drafted by the Starfinder team, and it's intended to show what Paizo is working on and some of the directions they're exploring. The first document focuses on the first five levels of one of the new base classes, the Soldier. Along with this, Paizo included some rules for futuristic weaponry and a couple of creatures for you to toss into your games. Unlike other playtests, the field test documents will not be accompanied by a feedback survey, as they're intended to be behind-the-scene looks at what's coming. You can look forward to August of next year when the full playtest launches, and that's when you're going to be able to share your feedback. Do you want to point out, you can learn more about this playtest. Coming soon, I'm going to be sharing my interview with Aaron Shanks from Paizo Inc. We do get into the Starfinder 2nd Edition playtest in a good amount of detail, as well as loads of other Paizo Inc. releases. I actually have a physical copy of this field test which uh, he provided to me. So I'm going to be taking a look through that as well. I got to say, if you enjoy Pathfinder 2nd Edition, you dig Starfinder as well, you should be very excited by this because, as you can see here, the hint that they're sharing in this little shot is Starfinder will be getting the three-action economy, which is what really sets this second edition of Pathfinder, apart from all other role-playing games. It really, really does. Roger Perdome is with us in chat. Good to see you, Roger. I think I've said hello to everybody who's hanging out in chat with us tonight. Let's talk about another Kickstarter because smashing through its Kickstarter goal for Schwalb Entertainment. I, I think I'm pronouncing that last name correct is Shadow of the Weird Wizard. And here's the scoop. Shadow of the Weird Wizard is a fantasy role-playing game in which you and your friends assume the roles of characters who explore the borderlands and make them safe for the refugees escaping the doom that has befallen the old country. Unsafe are these lands. The Weird Wizard released monsters to roam the countryside. Cruel fairies haunt the shadows. Undead drag themselves free from their tombs, and old ancient evils stir once more. If the displaced people would rebuild their lives, they need heroes to protect them. Created by one of the designers behind the 5th edition of Dungeons & Dragons, 
Shadow of the Weird Wizard stands as the next evolutionary step of the game system that powers Shadow of the Demon Lord. Like its predecessor, Weird Wizard offers exciting adventures, tight campaigns, streamlined rules, and deep customization that reveals itself as you play the game. Best of all, anyone familiar with D20-style role-playing games can find it easy to understand how the game works and plays, making it appealing to gamers of all ages and levels of experience. The game has been designed, redesigned, playtested, and developed over a span of several years and is ready to move into the final editing phase. All that's needed is the funds to pay for illustrations, editing, production, and printing. And that's why there's this Kickstarter project. There is a short Kickstarter video. It's music and artwork, but you get, get a better feel for what's going on with this Kickstarter. So let's take a peek. <laughs> The Shadow of the Weird Wizard Kickstarter is easily past the 300% funding mark. And you can reserve a copy of both the Shadows of the Weird Wizard and Secrets of the Weird Wizard, which Shadows of the Weird Wizard is the player handbook, as far as I understand. Secrets of the Weird Wizard is the Game Master's book. Now, you can grab these digitally, plus other goodies, right? Just... It's not just that. For a $49.99 pledge, no, actually, maybe it's just $49. Scratch that 99 cents. Or you can grab the actual physical releases of those two books with those stretch goals and goodies as well. For a $99 pledge, now this is through September 7th. Expected delivery is next August. Tessie Trekkie has joined us in chat, and they mentioned that Shadow of the Demon Lord has a wonderful class customization system. Level 1, pick Mage, Cleric, Fighter, or Rogue. Level 3, pick an Advanced Class. Level 7, pick a Master Class. It's all very flexible. I've always heard really great things about Shadow of the Demon Lord. I know in the past, at Gen Con, I had seen lines to pick up like new releases from Shadow of the Demon Lord. And, I mean, there were lines that were, like, putting bigger publishers to shame at Schwalbe Entertainment. The only thing that I've kind of shied away from taking a look at Shadow of the Demon Lord for is because I'm not really into kind of a grim, dark setting. From my understanding, it's, you know, it's, it's the end of that fantasy world. And no matter what the characters do, it's going to be the end. And, and <laughs> it's just, 
Yeah, no. but then again, I had heard that mechanically, really, really top-notch stuff. So Shadow of the Weird Wizard is going to be far more like family friendly because I I also know Shadow of the Demon Lord is 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 for a mature audience. I don't necessarily mean that as it's you know like X-rated mature. Flaming Heron says grimmer the better for them. Sessie Trekkie says, yes, the setting is grim, dark system isn't. No, because, I mean, it's a game system. So, Flaming Heron said they found out about this through the bundle of holding release for Shadow of the Demon Lord. Very nice. Final news piece. I'm only doing four news pieces tonight, so just so you know. Uh, I'm trying to... Uh, we'll talk when the news is over. We'll talk. Now available in print and PDF is the Danger Gal Dossier for Cyberpunk Red from Artel Saurian Games. Here's the latest. They're more than just cat ears and cute pink guns. In the dark future, data is power and no one owns more data than Danger Gal, Night City's premier investigation and security neocorp. Run by Mikito... I'm sorry, Mik Mikiko, Mikiko, I think it's Mikiko, Sanderson, Ni Araska, yes, that Arasaka. Danger Gale's archives contain information on everything and everyone worth knowing. And lucky to you, Chumba, we've prepared a copy of those archives for download straight into your cyberpunk red game. Inside Danger Gale dossier, you'll find information on MOOCs, lieutenants, mini-bosses, and bosses of both the standard and hardened varieties. You'll learn about the factions of Night City from edge-running crews and nomad packs to booster gangers and elite trauma team squads. And when the plethora of NPCs we're giving you in Danger Gale dossier isn't enough, you'll find the guidelines you need to bring your own Night City denizens to life. Danger Gale dossier includes lore and details on 15 of Night City's factions, including the NCPD, Maelstrom, Tiger Claws, Trauma Team, Sixth Street, and the Bozos. Stats and biographies on over 100 NPCs, ranging from newly inducted gang members to powerful cyber psychos ready to rip up the street. There's guidelines for creating your own NPCs of any power level from MOOC Garden boss and a new mission set in night city featuring the one and only danger gal and a mysterious second faction want to know more you'll have to play to find out this 176 page hardcover is now available it carries an msrp of 40 dollars or you can grab just the danger gal dossier pdf over at drive through rpg for 20 dollars and guess who's got a copy of it? <laughs> yes. I will be sharing a first look at the Cyberpunk Red Danger Gal dossier next week. So we're going to be talking about what I've got planned. So this was selling fast, fast and furious over at the Artelsurian game. Uh, exhibit area, which they had a nice size area at Gen Con. I got to say hello to Cody Pondsmith. I didn't get to say hi to Mike Pondsmith. And it was funny because I popped over there on Saturday and because my brother had left, so I no longer had a cameraman. So it was kind of like, yeah, well, that's the end of my interviews and stuff like that. And as I was walking along, I ran across the Artel Saurian, you know, exhibit area, which I had, I had passed by earlier in the, during the show. And I saw Cody Pondsmith was signing autographs and that. So I walked over and uh, waited and I said, you know, I just want to say hello and thank him for, you know, him and his dad for all their hard work and for sending along review copies and stuff like that. And then Jay Gray, who is their marketing person, popped out and they're like hey jeff and i was like hi and uh he was chatting with me a little bit and he 
He said, uh, hey, have you, uh... oh, he said, have you seen the Danger Gale dossier? And I said, well, I know it was coming out here. I haven't seen it. He said, well, here, let me give you a copy. That way I don't have to pay to ship it to you. And then he asked me, and yeah, we chatted a little bit more, and he asked me if I uh, knew John from Monster Fight Club, and I said, no, I don't. So they were right next to Cartel Sorian Games because they've got Cyberpunk Red Combat Zone, which I guess was kind of uh, a Gen Con release. You may have been able to have gotten it before Gen Con. I'm not sure. But they had a huge display in it. It was, it was really cool. And... Um, We're looking at this tomorrow. <laughs> so that was very cool. So anyway, so that is the news tonight. Of course, I was just talking about Danger Gale Dossier for Cyberpunk Red, available in PDF over at Drive Through RPG. Don't forget that the gaming gang, thus the Dispatch, is affiliated with the One Bookshelf site. So if you are going to visit, say, Drive Through RPG or Dungeon Masters Guild, Storytellers Vault, what have you, please stop by thegaminggang.com first. Click on one of our banner ads. That way, if you happen to make a purchase, I get a small portion of that sale. All those nickels, dimes, and quarters really add up and help keep thegaminggang.com around. Also, if you like this video, Besides giving it a thumbs up, which I would hope is your game plan while watching this. I would hope. But if you like this video, if you dig the channel, if you find thegaminggang.com to be a valuable resource, hell, if you just like what we do, then by all means, please swing on over to paypal.me slash thegaminggang and make a small donation. Hell, buy me a cup of coffee, what have you such as our good friend, the Madman, recently stopped by and made a not-so-small donation over at paypal.me. Thank you kindly. Much appreciated. So a big thank you to all of you out there who either or or and use the links for drive through RPG and such over at thegaminggang.com and or by paypal.me really really do appreciate that because you gotta keep in mind i don't run kickstarters i don't do patreons things like that beans and dice carlos is joining us i believe uh so the noise gate is clipping me on the release let's see Let's see if that improves things. Uh, let me know, Beans and Dice Carlos. By the way, thank you very much for uh, tuning in and uh, saying hello in chat. Is that, uh, is that any, any uh, better? So, there you go. Yeah, sorry about that. As I had mentioned, uh, if you weren't watching earlier, the preamp that I use uh i think it crapped out while i was gone so the recording i made of uh my my first look at uh D, &D big b's gl uh, presents glory of the giants sounds not that great so i can't say the sounds gonna be awesome on this either but i was trying to play around with what i've got available to me so this is probably not very processed Usually it got a little bit of process. So, uh, beans and dice, Carlos says, I hate when equipment changes happen. Glad you're powering through. Well, got to make do with what I can. There's a reason. Even though there's no longer duct tape holding anything together down here, uh, there's a reason why it's called the duct tape, duct tape studios. I guess I need a, an equipment change for my mouth. All right. So, anyway, that was the news. 
So we'll talk a little bit about Gen Con. So I had a lot of fun. I got down there on Wednesday uh, around uh, about one o'clock. Uh, and unfortunately, I was not staying downtown. I was staying uh, about a 15, 20 minute drive away. So went there, was lucky to actually be able to check in early. And it was at the Sleep Inn. And I was really pleasantly surprised. It was very nice, very clean. And there was a hot breakfast every morning. Eggs, bacon, sausage, waffles. I don't eat breakfast because I do intermittent fasting. So I did not get to partake. Did have a little coffee and some juice, but my brother certainly did, so he got to enjoy it. So, had a lot of fun. I couldn't believe. I had, I got stopped about 30 times. Could not believe it. I was recognized that many times. I was like, holy cow. And a lot of times people would be, they They'd be walking and they'd be like, I know you. I know you. And I'd be like, do I owe you money? <laughs> Did you see my face in the post office last time you were there? And I'd try to come up with something. And they're like, you're the gaming gang. And I'm like, well, I'm Jeff. I'm part of the gaming gang. And uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Like I said, I uh, got to meet John. So that was really cool. We got to chat for a little bit. And... Uh, I was wrapping up my interview with Paizo, with Aaron over at Paizo, and I'm putting my camera and stuff away because I, I break everything down after each interview because I don't need anybody knocking my $2,000 camera out of my hands. And uh, all of a sudden, somebody walks up. It's a younger guy and his dad. And the younger guy is probably late teens, maybe 20. And I said, hey, I just want to say I really love your videos. Really, really like your channel and you've got a great website and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, thanks a bunch. And he had this player's handbook with for fifth edition. And he asked, he said, could I get your autograph? <laughs> I was like, I was like, are you serious? He's like, yeah, really. I, I'd love to. I'd love your uh, to get your autograph. And I said, you know, that's going to bring the value of that book down. And he had other signatures in this book, and he opened it to a page. He said, could you sign it here? And I said, sure. And he said, this is where Tracy Hickman and Margaret Weiss signed the book. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, <laughs> you want my autograph next to famous authors, <laughs> famous creators, right? I was like, oh, okay. So it was funny. I had, I had people say really nice things to me. And uh, I'll be the first one in it. I, I almost got a little teary-eyed. I really did. Almost. <laughs> I was like, thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Because hey, usually it's, yeah, it's just me walking around. Yeah. Ah. So, uh, here it says he wants an autograph too. Oh, now he retracted it. So there was that. Um, I picked up, like I said, I'm going to talk about Gen Con all week long. I'm not, I don't need to like force everything into this show. I picked up. Now, this is not the official Genevieve dragon from Rollercrit. This is actually from My Little Demon. And you, you might be sitting there thinking, so wait a second, hold on. I thought Genevieve is red. And yes, Genevieve normally is red, but I guess the story is that this year, Genevieve went into space and that has caused Genevieve to turn blue. So I picked this up. This is going to be going behind me. And a big thank you to Heather over at MyLittleDemon.com.
Facebook.com because I guess I can share this information now. She was only releasing so many of these at certain times throughout the convention. So once it sold out, then you had to wait like a couple hours or whatever for the next wave. So I went over there because I wanted to get one of these and it was sold out. And she showed me the schedule. This is when it's coming out, you know? And uh, I said, <laughs> like, uh, I've got interviews and things like that. So I said, um, could we maybe work something out? I'm like, I'm like, you know, I'm, the, I'm press. <laughs> so she was super nice. And she like on the sly slipped me one. <laughs> I paid for it. I mean, but I mean, I got it when I shouldn't have been able to get it. So I thought that was very cool. Um, I'm not going to show you like my, my, like Gen Con Hall, because I see where some people find that to be pretty rude. And I get it. I understand. So something from Comic-Con arrived. I don't know if you can make, make that out, but uh, it's me. <laughs> that is a pop. Yeah, uh, uh, uh. so it's me in a jersey with a baseball cap and uh, a couple of cats. Can't really see the other cat. It's kind of in a, in a corner because this is at an, as, at an angle. So, yes, it is my own Funko Pop. Now, it doesn't make me special because you can pop yourself. So this is something that Funko is now doing. So you can create your own pop. Uh, you, only, you have only so many options of different things, which I'm sure in the future they'll probably expand upon. But I thought that was pretty cool. So that'll be going up there <laughs> behind me. Flaming Around says, but do you want to pop yourself? Yeah, that's what they're calling it. Pop yourself. Beans and Dice, Carlos says, I like that idea of dropping product in waves throughout the con. That's a risk for the vendor, but nice for the attendees who can't be there first hour. Uh, Roger Perdome's with us. I I'm, forget if I said hello to Roger or not. So one last thing I'm going to talk about, about Gen Con, uh, and then we're going to kind of move on. And like I said, I'll share more stuff about Gen Con throughout the week. So people were curious about Lorcana, the Disney trading card game, which I don't know why everybody's like, oh, trading, it's a trading card game. Nobody wants to say collectible card game anymore. I don't know why. It's like, it's the same damn thing. It was an unmitigated disaster. I didn't go anywhere near it. I didn't try to get involved. Now, Elliot had asked me if it was possible if I got a, an opportunity to pick some up, to pick it up for him. I didn't sniff it. <laughs> so, so people were lining up outside the convention center at around 1 a.m. to get copies of this. And... There was also a room that was set up for Lorcana for, um, you had to have a ticket. And I think the ticket also got you a, like a starter set. So it wasn't just like a $2 event ticket. So I think people were lined up for that as well. Uh, I don't think they lined up that early. But it was funny because the auction moved because the auction for years has been across the hall from the exhibit area. And it got moved because last year there were too many people that were out in line for the uh, consignment store. 
but all he did was replace those people in that line with people in line for Lorcana. And people were standing in line. People got in line at like 3, 3.30 in the morning. We're not getting copies of the game because from my understanding, there were only 200 copies per day that were allotted to be sold. So Kevin says those event tickets were 20 bucks. Like you, I wasn't touching it with a 10 foot pole. Kevin says, because he's cheap. I didn't, I didn't do anything with it because I have no relationship with Ravensburger. I never have. Uh, any relationship we had with Ravensburger, that was when Elliot was part of the team. So I don't, so for me to walk up and be like, hey, handouts, you know, or even to have reached out before the show to try to do something. Although I did also hear that uh, there were some very strict press restrictions as far as what they could and couldn't say about uh, the game. And I'm like, okay, that's not my style. Publishers don't get to tell me what to say about their games. It's not how I operate. A lot of people out there do. Um, I will hold off on bad-mouthing a particular publisher. They said they were going to send some stuff out. I'm going to see if they do. If they don't, then I'm going to drop kick their asses pretty hard. <laughs> Just won't be today. Thankfully, there are a lot of a lot of really cool people that I had not met before at Gen Con with various different publishers who made up for the really shabby treatment I received from a particular publisher I have covered quite a lot in the past, which I might not be in the future. <laughs> All right, anyway, we are going to be diving on in and taking a first look at Heroes of Barcadia in just a few moments. But first, I think it's time for a brief intermission. <laughs> First manned rocket to outer space. We pick up the count. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. We're off to visit the planets. There are treats galore in the stars. Venus is loaded with candy. And ice cream is found upon Mars. The soda pumps glisten on Saturn. When you're thirsty, it sure is the spot. And Jupiter's really jumping. The pop on this butter and pop. But the best of them all is the planet. Where all of these treats are at hand. And that is the spot we now head for. Our theater refreshments band. <laughs> An invitation from the King of Beers. Live life every golden minute of it. Enjoy Budweiser every golden drop of it. Cold, golden Budweiser. Budweiser. Sure. Wilkins coffee? No. Oh, things just seem to happen to people who don't drink Wilkins. Once there was a glamorous movie star who did the most marvelous things. A little girl named Shirley Temple. She had a pony to play with. Drove her own car. She was so beautiful, Ideal has made a doll that looks just like her, a Shirley Temple doll. Same dimples, 
same golden curls you can really shampoo. And when you kiss her, her skin feels almost real. Your Shirley Temple doll comes all dressed up and just loves to have tea parties with her very own Shirley Temple tea set. Wouldn't you like to have a Shirley Temple doll? You can. She's waiting for you at your favorite toy store, along with the Shirley Temple tea set with Shirley Temple's picture or monogram on every piece. Yes. So I, I do see there's some discussion going on about Lurkana and the theft of three hundred thousand dollars worth of cards. And at one point it was it was floating around that it was Lurkana cards that had been stolen. And the funny thing is on Wednesday I saw a big crate of Lorcana product sitting outside that room because it even had stenciled on it, Lorcana. And it wasn't a pallet though. It was a crate. It was probably about five feet high, uh, five feet long and maybe four feet deep. So it was big. So I'm, I'm guessing that that was some of the product that they were using for the, the ticketed event that was going on inside. But then it turned out uh, a representative of Ravensburger did say, no, it was not their cards. So, um, yeah, so John is pointing out it was all kinds of cards. Two guys with a pallet jack stole a pallet. So this is what I'm kind of curious about is, uh, I guess it's what, Dice Breaker? Who was saying it's two? It was two guys. It was two guys who who stole it. How do they know? How do they know it was two guys? No one else is claiming they know how many thieves were involved with this, except for Dice Breaker. So yeah, flaming here. It says two guys from Dice Breaker. You guys, you all know, I, I'm just not a fan of Dice Breaker. Dice Breaker is too much of, of an outlet that had has financial backing behind it. And uh, they're very shilly. You know, they, you never hear anything, you know, negative coming from those folks. Plus, they got like 150,000 subscribers like two days after they had launched their channel. It's like... Yeah, how did you get those? <laughs> so, Kevin says there was a video. I don't know if it showed two people or just someone who pulled the pallet jack. I don't know. I don't know. All right. So, tonight, we are going to be taking a look at Heroes of Barcadia from Roll a Crit. I should point out, this is the official Gen Con hat from Roll a Crit. And I had an opportunity to chat with Aaron and Dan from Rollercrit. Super, super nice. Really enjoyed speaking with them. I have uh, an interview with Aaron. It's only audio. And I did shoot some B-roll stuff. So I'm going to try to piece together a video out of it. Because I really don't do podcast stuff. So, but... Uh, Really, really nice folks over at Rollercrit and kind enough to not only give me Heroes of Barcadia to review, but also the official Gen Con hat for 2023. So big thanks for that as well. Anyway, Heroes of Barcadia once again is from Rollercrit. It's designed and illustrated by Madison O'Neill. The game is for two to six players. With the party pack, you can bump that up to eight Plays in around 30 to 90 minutes. It says ages 21 and up, but uh, that's just because you see it's beer glasses, right? And it's filled with beer. It doesn't have to be filled with beer. So you can get the retail edition, not the Kickstarter edition, the retail edition for an MSRP of $60. 
the additional party pack is available for $25. So let's swing on over to the other camera because here I've got Heroes of Barcadia, a party game of dungeon exploration and drink consumption. So I'm going to get the shrink off here. I had an opportunity to take a peek at this uh, last year at Gen Con. There were some demos that were going on. Well, I shouldn't say demos, really. Uh, Roller Crit was inviting the press to come over to the Crown Plaza. And you could have a beer and check out the game. I had the beer. I didn't play, but I did have the beer. Actually, you know what? Let's look at the back. Before we jump on in, let's see what kind of sell sheet info we've got here. And I'll tell you, this was selling big time at Gen Con. I saw a lot of people walking around with Heroes of Barcadia. Heroes from all across Barcadia have gathered to claim glory in the realm's greatest drinking competition. Alas, on the eve of the festivities, a band of monsters stole all the drinks and hoarded them somewhere in a perilous, sprawling dungeon. Do you have what it takes to outmaneuver your opponents and become the hero who reclaims the precious drink hoard? Nice guys, finish last in this fast-paced, ever-changing, fantastic party game for fantasy and beverage connoisseurs alike. I don't like fantasy, but I like beverages, so... Sign me up. <laughs> right there, what I was saying earlier, Heroes of Arcadia can be played without the consumption of alcohol. I'm sure there are a lot of alcohol-related puns and, and things like that. <laughs> it says, quench your thirst for adventure. That's kind of funny. All right. So we have six glasses. And they are plastic. One thing I should also mention, as far as I understand, everything is waterproof. So, all right. So these glasses are stuck in here pretty good. So... I don't know if there was supposed to be a 20-sided die there because there's all these 20-sided dice. So I've got some tokens, some uh, six, uh, some little hex, hex-sized or hex-styled tiles. We've got cards. So let's, let's take a look. So I do know a little bit about this. Roger asks, is waterproof or is it beer-proof? Ah, both. So these are plastic. They are not glass. I think the Kickstarter was glass. So we have Merlot, the sorcerer. All right, come on, autofocus. Pick this up, pick it up. What the hell's wrong with you? Come on, Panasonic. Come on, Panny, you could do it. I do have it set for... Hold on. It is set for autofocus. It's probably because I've got all this other stuff sitting there. You know, I've told you umpteen times how, uh, how poor the autofocus is. <laughs> ah, these Panasonic cameras. Everything else is excellent. So you know what we're going to do? I'm just going to lock this in. <laughs> there you go. Sorry, gang. I would have liked to have gotten closer looks at this, but for some strange reason, the panty is not behaving. All right, so we've got Merlot the Sorcerer, and then you'll see these markings. Let's try to angle it so you can see that a little easier. So we've got full 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, dead. <laughs> So as you take damage for your character, you actually drink. So here's Merlot. And then we've got... Uh, 
Absinthia, who is of Wormwood. So it looks like she might be a kind of a an archer or a ranger. And then we even have at the bottom of the glass, Heroes of Barcadia. So we've got those. We've got Kegger. <laughs> it's probably the Barbarian. So, uh, so yeah, so the, the autofocus, that was just, that was a, a simulation of you playing this game after a while. <laughs> Your eyes won't be able to focus. So there we go, Kegger the Barbarian. I think, if I remember right, there's a Sir Drink-a-Lot. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Here he is. Sir drink a lot. Looks to be uh, a knight. It may just be more like a just a fighter. Mm, come on, get back in now. Don't want to be scratching this stuff up. See, I could easily see playing this with my brother. And Elliot, Elliot's son, Brian, probably my nephew Cameron. But, you know, all of age, right? So we have Intoxica. She is a necromancer. John asks, do they come alive while you drink? I don't know. All depends. All depends on how much you're drinking. So, Madman says, I'm guessing heal spells cause you to refill the glass. Yes. That is the case. And then lastly, we have Flaskian, the concealed. So, he is our thief, our rogue. I didn't see a rule book, so... I'm going to guess we've either got uh, a rule book underneath our insert or we'll have like a QR code. Ah, there we go. So that's what I saw poking through. It was the rules. So we've got a little ad for the party pack. And you can actually play <laughs> on roll 20. Oh, that is classic. <laughs> Get together on Roll20. Flaming Heron says, oh my, games aren't ending well. Everyone is under the table eventually. Well, I mean, come on. These are pint glasses. One pint of beer isn't going to knock somebody out. One, at least, <laughs> certainly won't even give me a buzz. So the object of the game is to be the first player to collect three power-ups and reclaim the drink horde by defeating the grand drink guardian. There is only one drink horde in the dungeon and it could be anywhere. Explore the dungeon to find it as you collect rewards by battling monsters and bosses. Don't let your health bar cup hit empty or it's back to the starting point with you. So it's showing us our components. Setting up the game. So it's showing us uh, how to put all of this together. So as you see, we've got the various different hexes that represent different rooms in the dungeon that are going to have different monsters, different bosses. So I will point out, this is not a cooperative game. This is not a semi-cooperative game. It is every cup for itself <laughs> so so we have types of rooms so we've got the starting point which is there monsters there's an example we're going to look at some of the cards as well monster team battles so it says oh well i guess there is a bit of a cooperative element i had asked about this and uh, I was told, no, it's, it's everybody for themselves, which 
is how you win. There's only one winner. But it says a team monster battle is the player who reveals that room picks another player from the group to be their teammate. And then we got rewards, magical portals, and we've got bosses. We've got our loot cards, power-ups, signature move cards. All players begin the game with a signature move card that is unique to their character. These work similarly to power-ups, granting special abilities that you can use repeatedly unless stated otherwise. Signature move cards remain in the possession of the player for the entire game. They cannot be lost, stolen, or dropped into the dungeon. You have traps. As far as loot cards, we have duels. If a player wishes to move into an adjacent room that is occupied by an opponent, the player may choose to duel the opponent for their spot. A player may only initiate a duel on their turn before they've completed an action. And then we have some frequently asked questions. Got, looks like we've got some options here. Madman says, any magic items? Beer goggles plus two. And we get some thanks to the various different play testers. So this was a very successful Kickstarter back in the day. Let's move that out of the way real quick. So let's see what we've got here. So we've got six different dice, six different 20-sided dice that are going to correspond with the color of your character. We have the hexes, the rooms. We've got loot and bottle caps. I wonder, <laughs> I wonder if these are like supposed to be like money. Wouldn't be surprised. So we've got these bottle caps here. Nice insert. Also has a little cover for it. Keep the dice and everything from rolling around in the box. And these are custom dice, custom 20 siders. Feel kind of light. Huh, so, so the one is uh, a skull. So I guess uh, you're looking real high. Okay, now, all right, where is my hobby knife floating around? There it is. Oh, come on. All right, let's take a look at these rooms first. John Skull says relics from Fallout. All right, so as I mentioned, these are supposed to all be waterproof. So here we've got our starting area, which I think we're supposed to build it out. I think it looked like it was like this, something along those lines. So I think that's the tavern. I think that's where the adventure starts, right? Fleming Heron says it's a skull for the one because you have to skull if you roll it. I don't know. I think that's a portal. I think that's a magic portal. So what you do is you actually set these up you're going to you're going to build it out and there was an example in the rule book how you'd be putting this together but you would have say let's get that out of the way say we got merlot right so merlot's there and uh decides oh i'm going to go 
explore that room and then you're going to flip it over to see what it says so it says it is a mimosasaurus <laughs> so if you defeat the mimosasaurus you get three loot cards it is level 13 and 10 damage in order to defeat it now as far as like ongoing battles i don't know i don't know what happens so it, I don't know if it's like, say you do five points of damage. Is it down to five or do you have to do that in one turn? I don't know. Of course, I'll have a review in the near future. There's our, dra our grand drink guardian. That is the big baddie, I believe, who, ha who has the drink horde. So we're not going to look at all of these, but I did want to give you a good look at uh, the artwork and everything. So this is a reward, a loot card. There's a few of those. Ooh, a power-up. Remember, you need three power-ups, so there's a few of those. Another magic portal. A few magic portals, actually. More loot. Bloody Mary, she's a vampire. A vampire boss. The cold one. Ginny in a bottle. <laughs> the blackout night. <laughs> We're not going to look at all of these. I don't want to you know, ruin the surprises for everybody. We've got the booze ooze. And you don't get a reward. What a bummer. No reward it for defeating the booze ooze. We've got the manticork. The Blur Maid. Oh, this this just looks like this would be a lot of fun. The Mud Slidra. <laughs> All right, so there's quite a lot of the monsters. So let me put all this back together here. And I can tell these are paper, but I can I can tell that there is some. Uh, treatment on these. Let's see what those were. Fire breathing flagon. The Sasquatch. It's got bagpipes. The hang ogre. <laughs> okay. So let's put this back in and then we'll take a look at these cards. And in that party pack, there are more monsters, more loot cards, too. And as you can see, there's space in here for more rooms and bosses and stuff like that. So there isn't room for more glasses, though, in this, which is fine. Or I guess we... Since they're plastic, I guess we would say cups. Flaming Heron says, the puns never stop. Okay, so... I think these are loot. And I think we're going to have a few different decks here. So I should mention, as I'm pulling this stuff apart. I had quite a few people come up to me when they were saying hello, uh, saying that they didn't want to see the format of the show change, that they would prefer to have three shows a week, still doing the news, and then a first look, review, whatever. So um, I don't know. You know, if that's what people want, then I'm fine with that. So I just thought, you know, a lot of people would, would prefer to, to see shorter shows, but maybe not. All right, so we've got handy info here. What to do on your turn? Complete one of these actions. Reveal and enter an adjacent room. Enter up to two revealed rooms. Attempt to claim the drink hoard if you're adjacent and you have three power-ups. You may also use your power-up abilities 
Uh, play as many during your turn loot cards as you want. You can use a magic portal once per turn. Duel an opponent in an adjacent room for their spot. Other handy info. To disarm a trap, roll 10 or more. Starting point is made up of several hexes, but operates as a single room. And then it talks about how to duel. So each player is going to get one of those. And then we have signature moves. I think these are the power-ups. So there are a few of those. And then we've got more loot. Okay. So signature moves. So... Kegger gets Berserk Boost. Absinthia gets Obedient Owl. Flaskin gets Trap Trickery. Sir Drinkalot gets Heroic Huzzah. Intoxica gets Nasty Necker Mixie. And Merlot gets a Personal Portal. Spelled like poor tall so we've got that we'll take a look at some of this loot swipe power up steal one power up from an opponent of your choice fireball inflict 10 hit points of damage on an opponent of your choice redo if you've just lost a monster or boss battle ignore the previous result and roll again all players involved in the battle must re-roll drain the monster you're about to battle receives a minus two level reduction for this battle only. That must be, I'll take a guess, that's how they hit. Mega Drain, it loses four from its level. And there are, are multiple copies of some of these cards. Resurrect, choose any monster boss has been defeated and whose room is not occupied. Flip it face down and it becomes active again. Then we got our traps. Place one trap in any unoccupied room of the dungeon, excluding the starting point. Up to three traps may be placed in a room at a time. All seeing eye, choose a room of the dungeon that is not revealed. Peek to see what it is without showing your opponents, then place the room face down in the same position. Okay, room swaps. You can swap rooms. Dash. You may complete one additional action this turn. Catapult. Reveal a room and move to it. You, If you reveal a monster or boss, you must first defeat it to move. If you reveal the drink horde, you may not attempt to claim it. This counts as an action. Got hypnotized. Choose an opponent. Move then into a room adjacent to their current position. As long as the room is revealed, unoccupied, and is not trapped. Then we got warp. And then we've got some just make your own. And create your own. And lastly, let's take a look to see what we've got with these power-ups. A Sprite Familiar, plus one attack against monsters. Cloak of <laughs> Invisibility. <laughs> the King's Cup. Once during your turn before you complete an action, you may draw loot cards until you have three in your hand. Poison Daiquiri. Once during your turn, before you complete an action, you may inflict five hit points damage on an opponent in an adjacent room. India Pale Flail. Plus two against monsters. Nice. All right, so we have got the decks of cards. Let's put this all together here. Now, there's also some space here for more cards. Let's slip these back in. See, this is where, yeah, I guess not so much. It's kind of a kind of tight squeeze here. But as long as you're careful, you're not going to break anything. So we've got the, the six cups, six dice the various different rooms, the bottle caps. Like I said, I think that's maybe cash. 
and then the various different cards. And I'm going to slide all this back in here. That is what we've got in Heroes of Barcadia. And real quick, let's take a look to see what we've got in the party pack. So this will bump it up to eight players. All right, come on, open up here. This looks like we've got another little insert. Okay, so we have Tipple. Looks like a bard. And Matilda, Malt Tilda. And they are, looks like they're a fighter. Then we got some new rooms. And we have some new cards. So taking a look at the insert from the core set, it looks like you could actually fit probably two more add-ons. Um, Maybe not. Maybe that would be about it as far as the the width. So we've got a power uh, power up, swipe power up, steal one power up from an opponent of your choice. We've seen that before. Fireball, thirst aid. Well, I guess we would have more cards because we have two additional players. Redo traps, warp. I think we had warp. Maybe not. Meat shield. Choose an opponent. They must battle the monster you have revealed. If they lose, they take the damage for you. If they win, you get the reward and move into the room. Well, well. Got rebuild. You may pick up one unoccupied room and place it in a different location, excluding the drink hoard if it's been revealed. All rooms must remain connected once you place the room. So then we got some power pass, flaming slingshots, some new power ups here, six pack breastplate, <laughs> potent sprite familiar. Got a couple of additional player aid cards. And then we've got the signature moves. We've got the soothing song and righteous recovery. I guess Malta Tilda might be a cleric. Okay, and then we get a couple of new starting location hexes. And some more power up. The Crunken. The Abominable Barman. Wind Flayer. A <laughs> Pub Crawler. <laughs> these are bosses. These are not. These are just regular monsters. Mojita Tar. Woodland Spritz. All right. So these are the hexes that you're going to get in the party pack add-on. Is this how they went in there? I guess so. Well, I'll make sure to, to actually get them in with the core box. All right, so once again, that is the party pack which this carries an MSRP of $25. The core set carries an MSRP of $60. And of course, I'm going to have a review in the very near future for 
Heroes of Barcadia. All right, sweet. Well, again, big thank you to the fine folks over at Rollacrit for providing me with the review copy. But keep in mind, neither I nor anyone else affiliated with Gaming Gang received any other sort of compensation to share this coverage with you. And these days, it's very important that you know that. All right, as I mentioned, tomorrow, we are gonna be taking a look at Cyberpunk Red Combat Zone. So that is on tomorrow's show. Thursday, we're gonna dive on in and take a look at Pathfinder Rage of Elements. Yes, this is the Gen Con release. This actually arrived while I was gone. So I will still do an August uh, Paizo preview, but we're gonna take a, a much deeper dive into this on Thursday's show. Tuesday, we're gonna take a look at the alpha release of Tales from the Valiant from Cobalt Press. And then next Wednesday, a week from tomorrow, we're going to take a look at the Danger Gal dossier for Cyberpunk Red. And then I think on Thursday, we will take a look at The Last Kingdom from Gamelin Games. In fact, I might switch that around. I might do Last Kingdom and kind of do a, a War Game Wednesday. Flaming Heron points out that uh, Heroes of Barcadia looks interesting, and they're waiting on the review. Of course, should also mention, check out my various interviews from Gen Con. I've got two more that are going to pop later on tonight, and they are Cubicle 7 Entertainment, as well as trying to remember <laughs> trying to remember what the other one is oh gameland games michael co michael co and uh, and gameland games had like this castle there at gen con you'll get to see it it's pretty wild so the madman says looking forward to what i have to say about rage of elements had a copy for about two weeks really like it so far yeah it's Kind of weird. It came really late. So, don't know. Don't know. Yeah, it was kind of funny. It was like, um, press got it pretty, pretty late. Usually we get stuff before it comes out. Uh, should also mention in the next day or so, I will have my first look at Dungeons and Dragons, a pr practically complete guide to dragons. Uh, no opportunity to win a copy of this because this is the only edition that's available. But check out my video, even though the audio is not great. My video for D&D &D Big B Presents Glory of the Giants. So you can find out how you can win a copy of this limited edition. Yes. All right. That is it for this time out. So if you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell. It'll not only let you know when the dispatch streams live Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evenings right here on YouTube at 7 p.m. Central. It'll also let you know when I upload other videos, such as my first look at the aforementioned Dungeons and Dragons, Big B Presents, Glory of the Giants. Of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit GamingGang.com with all the latest in tabletop gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more that you won't find here on the YouTube channel. You know the drill. Get your geek on at GamingGang.com. Thank you very much for watching. If you're watching live, big tip of the cap. If you watched live and took part in chat, an even bigger tip of the cap, because not only are you keeping me company, you're keeping each other company. But of course, I know a lot of people out there, you don't have an opportunity to watch live. It doesn't matter if you're watching live or on Memorex. 
I really do appreciate each and every one of you taking time out of your lives to watch any of the videos here on the channel. So I will be back tomorrow. And as always, I hope all of you out there get to enjoy plenty of great gaming with your gang. Thank you.